Hi, this is Sarah. I am so excited to show you how to make one of my sweet little gnomes and I'm going to walk you step by step through the process. So this is perfect for beginner to advanced. You do not need a pattern. I will show you everything you need to do in order to make one of these gnomes. The first thing that I like to do is cut the styrofoam ball that's going to be on the top of the piece of the section of pool noodle. I like to cut it in half. So I'm just going to take this big uh, bread knife and cut it right down the middle. It actually cuts very easy. I like this particular styrofoam because because it's so easy to cut. Next, I'm going to take my section of pool noodle and I'm going to decide which side I want to be the top. And then I will, my, my styrofoam ball is a little bit too big um, at first, so I'm just rolling it with pressure against my table to kind of round it off. And then once I do this a few times, it will fit flush up against the um, pool noodle. Next, I'm going to glue the styrofoam ball to the pool noodle uh, using my hot glue gun. I love this AdTech uh, hot glue gun. It has dual temp, which means it's got high and low settings. And I like it on the low setting for this particular kind of project because it will not melt the uh, pool noodle or styrofoam on that low setting. Now I'm ready to cut uh, my material for wrapping my pool noodle, wrapping the body. So I just use my little uh, body as a guide and I will grab a little marker and just mark off where it ends. I like to add a little extra overlap. Once I get my material cut out, I'm going to line it up on my body and I like it to overhang just a little on the bottom and at the top part I'm not so much worried about. I at least like it to be up to the top of the styrofoam or the top of the pool noodle, but it can touch on the uh, styrofoam ball as well. Once I get the material glued onto the body, um, I like to go around the bottom and put little snips about a finger wide. And I like to apply a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom of the pool noodle and then glue those little tabs down. This will help that material to lay really flat and not like crunch up or make wrinkles or anything like that. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to grab two of my medium sized bendy hair rollers that I get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to grab that same material that I used to wrap the body and I'm going to cut some for my bendy hair rollers that are going to be my arms. And I don't want this white trim that's on there, that the edge piece, so I'm just cutting that off. And I like to have plenty of extra overhang on one side of my uh, hair roller so I'm just giving myself enough I'm using my hair roller as a guide to know how wide to measure now I'm gonna fold up one end of just a little one end of the material and I'm applying hot glue and I'm just gonna fold it up just a little just to kind of make a clean edge um, I do this just because sometimes the material will fray and then also if I'm not adding like a cuff to the sleeve I like to have this and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do that at this point so I just went ahead and um, folded up that side now I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue and rolling that material around that um, hair roller and I keep it tight and I'm just applying more hot glue to seal off the whole edge and then I'm going to cut that material that excess material off and once I cut that off I'm going to do the same thing for the other bendy hair roller
So you can see I'm applying the hot glue um, up one side of that material from the bottom of that hair roller to the top of it. And then I'm just going to roll it and kind of keep that material tight. I'm going to roll it uh, forward and I'm apply a little bit more hot glue in order to get it secured in place. And then I'll finish by adding more hot glue to seal it off. Now I'm just going to clean the arms up just a little bit. I'm going to trim off any excess material and then if there are any gaps where the hot glue is, I will fill those in and kind of smooth it out. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part just a little bit. Now I'm going to prep the legs using those other two bendy medium bendy hair rollers from the Dollar Tree. And I started to use this small piece of white felt and then realized um, I needed a little bit more because I wanted, I did not want the blue color of the felt of the hair roller to show through the felt. So you'll see me uh, remove that in a moment once I apply it and grab a bigger piece of felt. Um, but what I've done right now is I just took the cap and the wire off of the hair roller that's inside of it. And I need to cut down these hair rollers just a little bit. I want them to be four inches long. So I am using my ruler and the reason that I want them to be like this is because I want that uh, dowel that's going to go inside of them to stick out a little bit on both sides. Um, just enough on one side for that little hex nut that I was showing you. And then on the other side, I want more sticking out so that it can go up inside the body here in a minute. So now I'm ready to wrap my rollers and I'm just applying another strip of hot glue just like I did with that other material in the arms and I like to work these at opposite ends and roll them uh, inward but again I realize I didn't have enough material to cover so that the blue doesn't show through so you'll see me here in a moment um, I realize that and I grab a, a different piece of material that has more more material So now you'll see me wrap around the, the roller twice um, so that you can't see the blue through. And once I do that, I will um, cut off the excess just like I did on the sleeves and clean it up. And then they will be ready for the dowel rods to go inside of them.
once those are done uh, I can now stick the dowels inside of them and uh, I can prep the body so that I can attach the legs so I'm gonna grab the body of the pool noodle and uh, I'm gonna grab my exacto knife and I'm gonna go about halfway um, between so halfway in the middle and I'm paying attention to where the seam is from the material I like that seam to be on the front of the body if it's a boy and so um, I'm marking I marked little X's and cut them with my exacto knife so that I can easily slip those legs inside of that body I think the important thing to remember here is where the seam is on the material and like I said I like the seam to be on the front side of the body um, so that I can hide it underneath the beard when it's a boy. Now I'll take my hot glue gun and I'll just squeeze about two or three squirts of hot glue up inside where I placed those X's where I cut and uh, and then I'll put the dowels in there and I like to twist I just feel like it adds a little bit more glue onto the dowel and really holds the leg really holds that dowel in there and then I'll add a little bit more hot glue uh, where I feel like it's necessary like up at the base of the body and the with a bait with a leg and the body meet um, just to hold those legs on and then I like to make sure that my seams on my legs are both facing inward so I'm just verifying that and adding hot glue where I feel like I need to now I'm going to show you how to do the shoes two ways. The first way I'm going to use the baby shower booties from the Dollar Tree and for the second way I'm going to show you how to make your own shoes from a styrofoam ball. Um, for the first way I did not show you how I come up with the amount of material to use to wrap the shoes but I do show you very clearly on the second method and the method for wrapping the shoes on either one of them is done the exact same way so now I have my material cut and it measures two inches by six inches and you'll need two pieces of this um, once you have that ready, you're ready to start wrapping those shoes. I like to add a little bit of weight to my shoes. So right now I'm just going to add these two little hex nuts. They are 7 16 size and they fit great inside the little baby shower shoes. And I'm just checking the position real quick to make sure they're in great. And then um, I'm going to, once I get those inside, I will begin wrapping. The first thing that I like to do is I actually like to start with the bottom of the shoe and get that covered. So I will apply some hot glue to the bottom of the shoe and then I will um, glue it down onto the material. And I like to leave a little overhang so you'll see me trim the excess of the material but I leave um, enough to kind of curl up around the base of the shoe. So once I get both of the shoes kind of trimmed up a little bit, I will then go around the uh, edge of that material and I put these little snips in it, kind of like we did on the bottom of the body for the pool noodle body. I like to put these snips in it because it just really helps the material to lay down flush against the um, shoe and once I get them trimmed all the way around, then I will take a little, I take my hot glue gun and I will put a strip of glue all the way around the base of the shoe. And then I will smooth up that uh, material onto the um, glue that's there just to kind of get it to lay down really well. And I'll do the same thing for both shoes. And this one I'm taking a little bit more time. I'm not going all the way around all at once. I'm just doing sections at a time. So now I'm gonna take the longer pieces of material and I'm gonna use those to wrap the shoe. And I like to start by applying a strip of hot glue to the back of the shoe. And then I will apply a little bit more glue um, halfway around and then begin wrapping my shoe um, like by pressing into the table or pressing into the material on the table and kind of rolling it towards me. 
Um, this allows me to kind of get it to stick and stay on straight. I can make sure that I'm not uneven. And then if I am uneven, I can always trim that off. But it creates kind of a clean edge. And then I'll finish by going all the way around the shoe. And then once I get to the back, I'll apply another strip of hot glue to finish off that back. And I like to leave a little overhang. And I like to do work on both shoes at the same time. So I'm cleaning this one up right now. I'm gonna cut it down a little bit because I feel like it's too tall, too long. Um, I don't want it to um, be, I want there to be some separation between the shorts and the shoes. So I want the shoes to be just a little bit shorter. Um, so again, I like to do both shoes at the same time. And then, so I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did on the first shoe on the second shoe. So once I get all the way back around to the where I started from, I am going to finish that off with a strip of hot glue, trim off my excess, and then I will trim down my shoe um, using the, uh, the first one as a guide. Um, so I kind of set my scissors on top of the first one and trim around so that I can match up the same height. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the second method for doing the shoes, and this is to make them, and I like to use the styrofoam ball. Um, this is a little bit smaller styrofoam ball than the one we use for the um, top of the pool noodle. This is, I believe, a 1.9 inch, and I like to cut it in half, and then this is actually becoming one of my favorite ways to do the shoes. So right now I'm rocking the ball side to side a little bit, just kind of, um, flattening both sides of the styrofoam balls and I'm doing both shoes at the same time and I, I like to flatten the sides first and then I just kind of smash a little bit round them off just to kind of give them kind of a, a little bit of a rounded shape and I try to make sure that both of them are fairly even and then once I do that um, I like to use the end of the dowels that are sticking out of the legs and I will poke them down just a little into the styrofoam balls. You can see that I made a little uh, puncture and I will use that as um, a guide for where to place my little nuts. Right now I'm just marking a, the indention with a sharpie just so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm taking my hex nut and I'm kind of pressing it straight down on top of that hole. Um, I want it kind of like level. So I'm just pushing down on both of them. And once I get those pressed in, you can see they made an indention. And then I'm gonna take some hot glue and put it on the hex nut and then just push it straight onto that spot. Um, I'm going to do the same for both shoes. And then once I do that, I can begin the process of uh, figuring out how much material I'm going to need to wrap my shoes. Once I get the hex nuts glued into place, I like to take my gnome and just make sure that everything looks good and it's balanced. And so I will put it in and if I need to push it down, I will. Now I'm ready to wrap the shoes that I've made. So I'm going to take my material and I'm going to use my little shoe as a guide. So I'm laying it long ways and I'm just making sure that I cut um, straight down using that shoe as a guide. And then I'm going to take it and I just I roll it around in the material so I can see how much I'm going to need to wrap. And you can see I added an extra shoe uh, shoes worth of material and that is so that I have some for the bottom. Now, same as the other shoes that we made, uh, that we wrapped, I'm just gonna apply hot glue on the bottom of these and press them down onto that material. And then I'm gonna cut off just enough so that I have a little overhang, a little extra 
so I can do the same thing and trim around and then snip all the way around same exact process as the other shoes Now that I've finished trimming, I'm going to go ahead and add those snips in all the way around the shoe into that material. And once I do this for both of those, I will apply a little bit of hot glue and just go right around the edge of the shoe and then roll that or round that or push that uh, material up into that hot glue. So here I noticed that my little edge of my material isn't very straight, so I'm just going to snip that a little bit, kind of clean it up, make it a little straighter. Then I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on those baby shower shoes and apply a strip of hot glue to the back to start it. And then I'm applying hot glue to the bottom of the shoe and rolling it uh, by pressing into the table, um, just rolling it around so that it sticks to that um, hot glue, the material sticks to the hot glue. And then once I come all the way back around, I'm gonna apply a strip of hot glue and then just kind of press it in the table, get it to stick onto there and then clean up any uh, excess material. Now I like to check and make sure that I like the placement of the shoe onto the leg and this has too much material as well. So I'm going to trim some down and I just try to kind of go around evenly and trim it down. And once I do this on one shoe, I use that first shoe as a guide to know how much to take off of the second shoe. I'm going to show you really quick how this shoe looks on the gnome, but for this particular gnome, I'm going to go ahead and finish the tutorial using the baby shower shoes, but please know that either method works very well. So for the hat, I'm using some fleece material, and for this particular gnome, I want my um, hat to measure six inches wide, folded, folded over, so two pieces or on the fold, six inches wide, and then I just cut a little snip to start me off, and then I'm going to cut kind of at a curve up to the 11 inch mark, and I'm just using my ruler as a guide to kind of help me not cut too much. But you can, you can also mark on your material if you choose to. I just tend to do it this way. Now I'm taking my shorts, my material that I'm going to do for the shorts, and I'm using the body of my gnome as a guide. And I know that I want about five inches, but this is how I kind of eyeball it if I'm trying to kind of uh, create the pants myself. And this is not always perfect, but it still gives me a really, really good uh, way to make the shorts and they fit pretty well almost every time. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on the hat and if I don't have like a finished off edge I will fold my material up just a little bit about a half an inch and then I will um, glue it with the folded side facing out but because this material has a finished edge, I'm not going to fold it. And instead, I'm just going to start at the bottom corner and add a little dot of hot glue and smash it together. And then I'm going to actually work my way down from the top of the hat um, to the bottom. So now that I've got that started on the bottom corner, that's really just to hold my place. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit at a time uh, some hot glue 
to the very edge and you'll see me grab my metal ruler and I really love to use this tool because metal is cold and it um, activates that hot glue or sets it really quickly not activates it sets it really quickly so it hardens really fast and I can move on very quickly but you can just use your hands and smash the material together um, and I'll also show you that way here in just a second Now I'm ready to work on the shorts and for this particular material I want that finished edge to be kind of the cuff of the legs so I'm going to keep that in mind as I'm going through and kind of putting my pieces together but right now on either side the, the part that is going to be the sides of the pants I'm adding a line of hot glue from one end to the other at the very edge and I'm just smashing my uh, material together um, and then of course I'm using my favorite tool again um, and then once I do that I like to check it on my gnome I always check and check and check before I do any like crazy changes or next steps um, and it's a little loose I'm noticing but I'm gonna work with with it and show you what I like to do when that happens but right now I am um, I got an idea of how long I want the um, legs and now I'm gonna fold my material in half long ways and then that side that has the finished edge I'm just gonna snip it about an inch up and then I, I like to oh, I'm sorry two inches up and then I'm gonna cut a little V um, at the very top of where I stopped and then I will open it up and show you and then once I do this now I'm going to kind of show you this is where I want to apply hot glue right across the edge and down the sides and I like to go just past the opening uh, so you can see me adding it and then curving it around and then I'll go down the sides and I like to stay right on the edge and the reason I put this little V snip in there is because it kind of mimics what uh, we do when you're sewing um, it helps your material kind of turn corners if you will um, and so it's just it just makes it lay down a little easier especially on a squared off or very straight shape um, so now that I have that I'm going to flip my material right side out and check it again So one of the things that you'll see me do right here, once I get my material turned right side out, I like to kind of roll the material back and forth on the seams kind of between my fingers. And this will allow me to kind of get that seam to lay down flat. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and try the pants on my gnome. And I realize that it's still a little loose. So I'm going to show you a little trick. One of the things I like to do with my gnomes when the pants end up a little bit loose at, at the top. So I'm going to turn the material back inside out and then I'm going to fold it over at the top. So in order for me to do this on this particular pair of pants, I needed to clip the uh, snip at an angle on the corners. Um, so now I'm just going to fold it over and glue that down um, and then I'm going to put my pants back on my gnome. So because my pants are still a little bit loose, looser than I prefer, I am going to create kind of a fake um, zipper button area. So to do that, you can see I'm pinching 
and once I pinch I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot glue into the pinch and then I'm gonna lay that pinch over onto the material and apply another dot of hot glue and just let that set and then once that sets up I'm gonna add a little button and it'll just kind of look like pants with a button and you can see I kind of fidget with it a little bit until I get it where I like it and then that's when I go ahead and glue it down and then uh, get ready to add that button and I'm just gonna add the same button that is uh, like the ones that I'm adding to the shoes in a minute. So I just decided that they would all be the same. Now I'm ready to work on the shoes again and I'll say always do your shoes after you add your pants. So first I like to add some hot glue inside those hex nuts that are in the either shoe, either the Dollar Tree shoe or the shoes that you make. Um, but I like to add that and then I stand my gnome inside of there with, in, with the dowels and I just check to make sure that he's not leaning one way or another and that he's facing the way I want him to face. So now I'm ready to begin working on his shoes and I am going to make these so that they kind of look like a little loafer in a way. So to do that, I'm going to pinch the um, front together, that material in the front. I'm going to pinch it and then I'm going to flatten it against itself. So first I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue inside of the shoe and then I'm going to pinch that material together so that it sets. And once I pinch it, I'm going to press that material that's in the front flat against it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other shoe. And I decided to turn this, this foot slightly so I'm needing to prop it up with something so that it I can see it head on uh, while I'm doing this. But I'm just again applying some hot glue and then pinching that front material together and then laying it flat against itself. And once I've done that, I'm going to go in on either side, either corner, and I'm just going to add a little dot of hot glue to those and then push the material um, onto that. And I'm going to do that for both sides. I noticed on this shoe that the material wasn't quite even, so I just kind of straightened up the edge and then I'm cleaning up um, these little frayed pieces as well. So again, I'm going to do the same thing for both feet and you see my corners. I'm just going to lift those up and apply a dot of hot glue to both sides. And then once I've done that, I'm going to flatten that material onto that hot glue so that it's just um, secure. So really quick, I want to show you, you can use buttons if you'd like. Um, just bigger buttons to put right in the center of the shoes. Um, you can use burlap trim around the edge of the shoes. This is a 1 8 thick white trim ribbon and I'm going to be using it to make the, the sh fake shoe laces or lace and it's about one inch size that I'm starting with but I'm going to cut it down a little bit from there so it probably ends up being about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to get four of these little tiny buttons. I only grabbed two at first so you'll see me grab two more in a second and then I'm going to grab a manila envelope just to set them on so you can see a little bit, bit better but the funny thing is I don't end up keeping them on the manila envelope so I apologize for that but um, I'm just going to start building these little laces and I'm going to add the buttons to them. So to build the little laces I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to one side of the button and stick it on one end of that um, trim ribbon and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other trim ribbon and then I will I'm cleaning them up a little bit and then I will grab the other button and add a little bit more hot glue and stick it to the other end I like using these needle nose pliers just because it's easy to grab um, small things with them they're not a requirement it is just helpful for me
So once I've got my buttons glued to my ribbon, um, I'm going to go ahead and add them to the shoes. So I'm just placing a little bit of hot glue on the back and sticking them directly to the front of the shoe. Next I'm going to add a little button to the pants. Now I'm ready to work on my arms. So I'm going to apply some hot glue to one of the wood balls. And these are 3 4 inch size. So I'm just adding some hot glue and sticking it straight to that little plastic cap on one end. And I'm going to do this for both arms. And then once I get both of those done, I am going to cut out a little bit of felt and I'm going to use this uh, material that I tried to use earlier on with the legs, uh, but I'm just going to cut off about a finger's width of the felt and I'm going to use that as cuffs for my sleeves. So I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to cut that from cleaning up the edge real quick and then applying a little bit of hot glue and I like to start on the seam apply a dot of hot glue there and then halfway around I like to apply another dot of hot glue and then once I come back around a, to the very beginning I like to add one final dot of hot glue and I like to also overlap my uh, material and then I will cut off uh, the excess. Now I'm ready to attach my arms and I like to do them at the same time. So I'll take both of my arms and line them up against the body and see how they fit. And so I like a little bit of the material to lay over the top of the head but not too much. So I just cut down a little bit and now I'm going to make sure that I like the way that they are placed on the body. And I like to have mine hang down just a little bit past where the pool noodle body uh, meets the leg. And now I'm gonna apply some hot glue um, and lay that material on the top over the uh, head part. And I'm gonna do the same for both sides. And then I'm going to bend or fold the arms at where I would think the elbow would be. And then I'm going to clean up any parts. So like if I notice that it needs a little bit more hot glue, which I do here in just a minute, um, I'll add a little bit more hot glue to really hold those arms onto that body. Now I'm ready to work on the beard. So I like to turn the beard material over to the back where the grid is or the like hard plastic material is and I want it to be two and a half, two and a half inches wide by three and a half inches long. So I've marked that with a pen and I'm very carefully not applying a whole lot of pressure just enough to cut through the back of that material with my box cutter. I find that a box cutter works amazing because it does most of the work for me. I don't have to apply a whole lot of pressure. And if you're noticing that your box cutter is not cutting through your material very easily, then um, you need to check the sharpness. It might need a new blade. So I'm showing you right now the if you don't uh, I cut it gently you will um, cut off the fur that's in the front and so I'm going to brush it out real quick and kind of clean up any loose uh, fur that um, came off 
and then I place it on my gnome at the top of the head and I pinch um, and this is something that I do personally this is not a requirement but I really enjoy pinching it at the top and I just where I've pinched it in the middle I just open it up and apply a little dot of hot glue um, just to hold that there and I feel like this kind of adds to the fullness it creates um, the full look of the beard So now what I'm doing is I'm adding some more hot glue to the rest of the top of the beard so that I can glue it onto the top of that body. And then I just smash it on there and make sure I like the look of it. So for the nose, there are lots of options and I'm going to talk to you about two of them. So I like to use the one inch wood ball for this size of gnome. Or you can use the um, stockinette, the little nylon pantyhose. They work absolutely fabulously. And if you like, you can even blush them using a little bit of blush. So I am using, this has two together, and I am using both of them together because I, I want to minimize how much I see the cotton ball through the nylon. So I'm going to start off with one. I grabbed two just in case, but I do end up liking it how, the, how it looks with just the one. So I just kind of squish that ball down tightly into the nylon and you saw I twisted it a couple times just to see how I like it and I absolutely like it. So I'm going to grab some little hair elastics and one of the cool things about using the cotton ball and uh, pantyhose method is that you can shape your nose which is really fun to do um, so again I'm taking a elastic and just wrapping it around once I've done that I'm gonna grab some string or thread or yarn in this case I'm using yarn and I'm just holding on to one end of it and wrapping it around a few times and then tying it off and I'll trim down that excess now I'm going to cut down the leftover um, nylon and you can save that pantyhose and use it um, several times. So now I'm ready to uh, attach the nose to my uh, beard. So I'm going to grab some hot glue. Right now I'm just kind of fluffing his beard out, parting it a little bit so I can really get it um, where I want it. But I just added a little bit of hot glue and stuck it right to the top of the head. I like to be down from the very top about uh, half an inch to an inch and you'll have to play with this yourself to determine um, the look that you prefer. Um, once I have the beard how I like it, I'll put the hat on. Now I'm ready to add trim to the bottom of my shoes and I would say this method works fine, the twine, but if you would like a little bit less tedious option, you can definitely use like a burlap trim, very thin, maybe a one eighth size or one fourth. You'll, you'll have to decide for yourself, but um, it would definitely make this process go much quicker. Um, and so right now I'm just taking a little clip that I have to keep my shoes spread apart so that I can go around um, the, the feet without getting the other foot into the hot glue. Um, and so I'm just going to go around the shoes three times with the twine, just laying the twine into the hot glue. And then when I come back around to the beginning, which is at the back of the shoe, um, I will snip off the twine at an angle and not straight up and down. If you cut it at an angle, it helps to kind of hide uh, the cut line.
Now I'm going to go ahead and use my hair dryer and I'm going, the reason is uh, the heat from the hair dryer will reactivate the hot glue and allow me to clean up any um, glue strings or um, any places where you can see the white of the hot glue. This will, this will make those all disappear and you can use your hair dryer or a heat gun, um, but a hair dryer, like I said, works just fine. Okay, so now that I'm finished cleaning up any of the hot glue, um, it is, I am ready to put my hat on my gnome. And so I'm going to grab my hat and put it how I want it uh, before I decide where to put the flower. And once I get it positioned how I want it, I'm going to grab my flower pieces. And for this particular guy, I'm just using some foam, craft foam type of flowers. Paper flowers work great. Scrapbooking faux flowers, like the fake flowers. I'm also using a button that I got from a shirt. So just I'm just going to add this little button to the front of the, uh, the foam flowers. And I made sure to glue those foam flowers together. I'm going to decide where I like the placement on the hat. For the flowers before I uh, just hurry up and glue them down. Um, this will take me just a second and then I add the hot glue and kind of play with the flower a little bit to get it where I like it and that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see the adorable gnomes that you create.